Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining today. I am Jim Coppinger with Zantech Consultants, and today we're going to be talking to you guys about uh, creating subdivisions from a civil 3D quarter, which is just a, a nice little uh, tip, um, something that we, we cover regularly, and, and the details on how to do this extensively we cover in all of our site grading and subdivision design classes here at Zentech Consultants. So um, just figured we'd share this, this little uh, process here with you today, which hopefully shouldn't take more than 10, 15 minutes. Um, so before I get into the, the presentation, just a few uh, housekeeping items. Uh, because it's a public forum, all the attendees, microphones and telephones are muted. Uh, but if you guys do have any questions or concerns, you can just type them in to the chat box or the question box. Um, I'm not going to take the time to answer as we go because I just want to kind of get through the presentation. But I have a lot of time at the end of the class. So if there are any questions or concerns, I will answer those then. All right. So with that said, let's go through a few slides and we'll get into the tip for today. All right. Um, for those of you who haven't actually worked with us before or attended any of our webinars or classes, we're Zentech Consultants and we work in the AC and manufacturing space, uh, you know, helping our clients with all of their technology needs. We are uh, civil CAD experts. Um, we can handle all your construction, quantity takeoff, estimating, really any of your technology workflow processes or custom customization training configuration needs. We're here to help. So we hope you guys all hit our website, see all the really cool things that we can do for your company. Right. So with that said, right, let's talk about what we wanted to, to you know, get into here today, which is the idea of using uh, your civil 3D corridors as a start point for your subdivision grading. And, and it's really, it's, it's surprising to me, you know, that what I'm going to show you today is actually a really simple tool. It really doesn't take a whole lot of effort. Like I said, I can show it to you in just a few minutes. Um, but it can really have a dramatic impact on your design. It's a great way to, in just a few minutes, rough out the entire platform of your site and subdivision, right? And probably get you 85% of the way through to your, your, your grading design, right? With just a few minutes, right? So with that said, right, it just takes a few minutes of time. And what I'm gonna do here to show you guys, I'm gonna go over to Civil 3D. I need to show you, I've got a, a little basic, uh, this is just kind of an example drawing that we use in, in a lot of our classes here, right? And it's just a corridor. I just have a standard Civil 3D corridor built, right? Simple two lane residential type road. And if we want to go in and we want to actually start a subdivision along this side of the roadway, right, kind of on the left side of the screen here, that, you know, what do we have to do from here? Well, you know, we're going to have to you know, start at either the back of the curb or a set back line, an easement line, whatever I have here in the corridor, work my way up to a high point, right, that's a break, and then down to the backyards and then eventually daylight back down, right, kind of trying to build kind of a, a reasonably flat platform where we're going to be putting in all of our you know, homes in this subdivision. So if I'm working with that, I can start by extracting a uh, feature line. I'm just going to kind of start here because I think it's a little easier for you guys to see on the, the tangent here. Um, I can just go in and I can just select on the corridor. Okay. And one of the tools you have on the corridor is the ability to extract feature lines from the corridor. It comes up in the corridor editing ribbon. Right? And I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to pick over on this side of the corridor right? and then hit enter. And you see it shows me all of the different features, all of the tools, right? that are available here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to uncheck all of these and i'm going to start with just the back of curve now remember you know when a corridor is built right what civil 3d really does is each point it cuts a section which you can see these dark blue lines here right to create the 3d model it goes from section point to section point it connects the center of road to the center of road the bottom of curve to the bottom of curve the back of the curve to the back of the curve and so on and it connects them using feature lines all right, so what we're doing here is just extracting out those feature lines right, as a separate entity that we can use as a start point for our grading design. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to make sure that I put this into my uh, survey site here because I only have a survey site in this particular setup. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to extract that feature line out. That's all I had to do. All right, now you can see that right here, I actually have, you see when I click on it, a feature line. You see it's highlighting in the feature line. And just so we can see that a little bit, I'll go to the feature line properties. Um, generally, I will name this just so I know it's my my control, right? So I'll just call it my back of curb, right? Feature line, right? And I'll put it on a different style uh, just so we can see it. And I'll just set it for basic. And you see that's just a different display style, and which comes in as as blue, okay? Right? And I'll just go ahead and say OK to that. Now, the big thing I do want to point out here, see this option? When you extract the feature line from a corridor, you have the option, and I, I recommend you always leave this on, to maintain a dynamic link. 
so that the feature line will always stay linked and connected to the corridor. And that's important. And I'm going to leave that on. You'll see in a while a little bit later. All right. So there you can see the blue line. Right? That's the feature line that's been extracted out. And you see it goes down. If I highlight that, you can kind of see it. It runs around the entirety of the entire length of my corridor. All right. So all I need to do from here is I need to you know, take that feature line and I'm going to use it as a basis for grading. Right? So I'm just going to go in here and like I said, I need to create a subdivision over on this side. And I'm just going to go to my grading objects. I'm going to go to my grading creation tools. Right? And I'm going to grade to a specified distance. And right? when I go in and say create my grading, it's going to ask me what site to put it in. I'm going to put it in my survey site because right? that's what I set that feature line into. Right? And I'm going to create a grading group. Now, right now, I'm not going to create a surface. I'll do that at the end of the, the presentation here today. Right? But I'm going to take that feature line, and that's my start point, that blue feature line. It says, what side do you want to grade to? Over here. Right? Are you applying the grading to the entire length? Yeah, we're doing a subdivision, so I'm applying this grading along the entire frontage of this 3D corridor. So I'm going to say yes. Okay? What distance? All right, so now it's about how far back am I coming from here to the, to the beginning point of my setup. So I'm going to say, you know, based on my design control, I'm going to come 25 feet from the back of curb, and I want it to rise up at an 8% grade, a positive 8%, okay? And it goes in, and it'll create a grading object on that side, and there you go, okay? See that it's structured and built right up in here, okay? And you see how it's actually starting to create that three-dimensional grading object? Now I can continue on. I'm going to grade to another distance, so maybe that's my front yard. I got that eight positive 8% slope. Now what I want to do is I want to create more of a break, right? This is going to be kind of the high part of the yard, but I want to break here. From this point, I want water flowing back, maybe down at like a 4% a down slope towards the rear yard, okay? So I'm going to take that, and I'm also going to continue grading to a set distance. I'm going to offset that, okay? Apply it to the entire length, yes. It says, what's your, your offset? In this case, I'm going to go back and say, ah, you know, 75 feet. I'm going to go 75 feet. It says, okay, how are we going to slope that? I'm going to put a grade of minus four. So I want it to go down 4% from there. Right? And you see it's going to just go in. It takes a second to process the grading object. And you see now it's creating a 4% down slope. Right? And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change my grade. And I'm going to grade to a surface. From here, I need to daylight. Right, right? I went up 8%, down 4%. So this back edge is kind of floating out in space right now okay so i'm going to grade to a surface right and i'm going to again i'm going to pick the feature line grading objects at the top and bottom create feature lines i'm going to use this feature line right i'm going to grade along the entire length right and i'm going to go in i'm going to put in a slope right and i'm just going to use a, a three to one slope okay grading down to the surface right and it's going down to my existing ground surface here Oop, for some reason it didn't do that. I think I messed something up there. I think I didn't choose the surface first. Nope, it's great. I don't know what I just did there. I had an issue. Maybe the I wasn't paying attention while I was talking. Let me do that one more time. Create the grading. For some reason it wasn't liking this. Yes, along the entire length. We're going to do it with a slope. All right, and three to one. And three to one. And come on. All right, for some reason, of course, something's not liking my my grading offset there uh, of course because i'm trying to show you something but in any event it's it's not usually a problem i'm going to slow it down here but you can usually take any feature line and just daylight it down all right but to show you what i have here like i said i started with the corridor and then i put it you know the slope going up the front yard and then the slope across kind of the the building envelope here if i go and I look at those in my object viewer right you can actually see what happened right as i tilt that up let me kind of zoom in here a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And of course, I'm getting a little drag from, from the share, so it's taking me. I got to slow down my zoom. Come on. There we go. Okay, pan this over so we can see. Come on, pan over. All right, and you can see exactly what happened, right? That I started right here at the corridor at the back of the curb. And you see it's going up my 8%, then it's breaking down. And normally, like I said, I don't know why I'm getting a, an issue here all of a sudden. Um, I have no problem daylighting down from here, so it daylights down to the surface at a set slope, okay? So right from here, I can automatically build just in a few seconds with a few clicks, right? I got my grading design, right? And now from that grading design, I'm just going to close my object viewer here, close this out, right? It's a very easy thing to go in and create surfaces, right? So corridors are easy, right? With a corridor, we can just go in, 
right? And I can go ahead and create a corridor surface, right? And I'm just gonna create a surface and add my top link data. And I'll set the uh, corridor extents as my boundary, right? Rebuild the corridor and let it build the surface here. Right? It takes just a second. All right. And again, because I'm doing the video share, it's taking a little bit longer than it normally would. But even so, a few seconds, right? And there you go. You can see I've got a surface with all my contours along the corridor, right? And I can do exactly the same thing with the grading group. Right? I can just go in here to the grading group properties and have it automatically build a surface. Right? And again, it'll take a second. And there you go. So now you see I've got the surface for the grading group and I've got the surface for the corridor. Right? And now I can just merge those together into a single surface, right? I can just pick on the corridor surface and paste my grading group surface into that. And just like that, I have one single surface, right? So now I can go into my object viewer, see it's fully contoured, fully structured, and you can see the 3D setup of, the, of this entire surface here, right? You can go and you can see the roadway, right? You can see the crown of the road. You can see my curb line. It's going up my front yards my building envelope running all the way down here and around, all the way down, right? So it's an easy thing to go in and set that up, right? Without any, any major to do, right? And what's really nice about this, right? And why I stressed earlier about um, the dynamic link between that feature line that we created, right? And remember that feature line is still here. It's still on the back of curb here. So what that means is that as I go in, if the road corridor changes, so let's say that they, you know, the design change and we're, we're going to take the alignment. All I'm going to do is move the alignment in a little bit, maybe up to there, just picking a random location, right? Then all I have to do is rebuild the corridor. And remember that, that there's a dynamic link, a connection between that feature line I extracted and the back of curve here, right? And you watch that everything, it's going to take a minute because like I said, I'm doing a, a share here. So hopefully Civil 3D doesn't lock up and crash on me because it's not liking all of the, the setup that I'm doing, right? But when I rebuild that corridor, right, it's going to, the corridor is going to shorten down to this area and that feature line will do exactly the same. Okay. And there you go. It took a minute, but now you see that it redid and it restructured and it redid my entire line. Now you can actually see, all right, yeah, now it's showing that outer setup. Okay. So you can see it's actually daylighting now. If I go in and look at the corridor, right, I don't know what the display uh, display issue was before, but it, it is now actually going in and it is actually daylighting down on my on my surface there. Okay, you can see the daylight on the back end. All right, but you see that it updated that whole surface, right? So that everything is tied so that as modifications or changes are made to the corridor, right? You see it redefined and reworked it all the way back up, right? All the way into where I'm working down into my daylight structure. Okay, so it's an easy way to be able to go in and do that. And kind of in, in another set, right, in another set of tools that you can do here, something that we cover in our grading and our design classes, right, is that we can actually go in, because these are feature lines that we're working with, right, at the top and bottom of slope here, right, I've got a feature line here, right, let me just go in, I'm just going to erase that surface real quick. Um, you see that at the top and the bottom of the slopes here, right, and it seems like I have another feature line there. Right? I've got a feature line here and a feature line here that kind of define my building envelope areas, I can go in and I can just use those feature lines to define parcels, right? And then I can do, you know, a parcel division frontage and it'll actually give me the side lot lines along my parcels already set at the correct elevations to slope and match up and down, right? So a lot that you can do there. It's a very, very powerful set of tools, right? You can actually, and like I said, in just a few minutes, get a full, you know, 85% grading design done on both sides of your road that's fully tied to your corridor design. And then as changes are made to the profile, the corridor, the section of the road, et cetera, it's updating your grading to match, right? Which is really, really powerful stuff, right? So that's what I wanted to show you today. So with that, um, I want to point out to you guys that I am, uh, I also am the host of the Cattle Call podcast. Um, you guys can find us in all the major listening outlets if you want more information on general the world of CAD and what's going on in it. But most importantly, uh, question and answer time. And I do see a couple of questions uh, come in here. Um, the first one is from Jeff. This is um, when uh, importing feature lines from a corridor, is there a way to set the site for multiple feature lines at the same time? Yeah, Jeff, if you saw when I when I brought up that that aspect, I kind of had to turn off multiples. 
okay when, when i actually went and i went to do the the extract feature line on that just do this real quick let me if i can find it go back to civil 3d all right when i went to the corridor right and i select the corridor when i go to extract the feature line you know i just go in here and I just pick whatever i just pick a location and hit enter you see i can extract all of these feature lines at once just by leaving them checked i unchecked and did just the back of curb but yeah you can extract all of the different ones all at once no problem okay um and another question from jeff is there a way to set the default site layer and style uh when importing the feature line from a corridor um yeah the, the feature line like i said when i'm when i'm doing that extract right all of your standard setup and properties right that you're working with here see over here where i can set the site here the style the layer right pay items all of the standard default settings can all be modified for each one of these right here in this dialog okay or you can go back in like i said after the fact and and restructure those okay all right and i think with that right we're gonna wrap it up here i don't see any other questions coming oh i got another question from jeff uh how do you change the site when you import them yeah it's just yeah like i was saying jeff you're just going in and you're just going to go in extract the feature lines off of this right? and all you have to do here is just click on the site and just change the site right there you can just change it okay right and that's the way that it works okay right and uh yeah and you do have to do those individually you have to do each one one at a time um all right so i think with that right just remind you guys um you can hit our website at zentechconsultants.net or you can reach out to us at any of the contact information up there sales at zentechconsultants.net um and if you like this tip and you think it's useful all right and you want to get more info on it and details uh, like I said, we offer tons of classes and, and training on Civil 3D and how to use all of those tools, right? So you guys can just go ahead and check us out, and hopefully we can get you into even more step-by-step -step informational processes, right? Other than that, thank you guys for joining today. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.